Hey guys, welcome back to Inchworm Gardens. On today's video, we're going to be talking about the sun, the seasons, an easy way to find out how much sunlight your garden is getting, and what the heck I'm doing up here. All right, let's get started. All right, so we all know the sun plays a big part in the garden and growing plants. They need it to survive. And if you've ever bought a plant from a nursery, you've probably seen on the tag, it will say full sun, partial sun, partial shade, full shade. Well, what does that mean? Well, that's how many hours of direct sunlight the plant needs to receive in a day to survive well. So full sun is six or more hours of direct sunlight, unobstructed by any buildings, fences that cast shadows on it. You want direct sunlight for six or more hours, that's full sun. Then you have partial sun, partial shade, that's three hours to six hours. Three to six hours, direct sunlight, that's your partial sun, partial shade. Then you have full shade, that's three or less hours of direct sunlight. Well, how the heck do you know how many hours of sunlight your garden is getting? I'm gonna show you a little trick to figure that out. It's actually quite easy. But first I wanna tell you a little bit about the seasons. Now this actually is not super important, but I thought it was interesting, so I'll tell you about it. Now I learned about the seasons in grade school, like probably all of you guys did, but just recently I was studying on it a little bit, clearing up some of the words and terminology, and made me understand it a little bit better, so I'm going to share that with you. So the first thing is the equinox. What's that? Well, equinox is Latin for equal night. It means the days and the nights are equal length, and that happens in the first one happens in spring, which is called the vernal equinox. Vernal, Latin, meaning of spring. So you have the spring equinox. It happens on March 20th, around March 20th, 21st, every year. It's the beginning of spring, and the days are equal length. Days and nights, equal length. Now at that point, the days begin getting longer. They get longer and longer until you arrive to June 21st, the first day of summer, which is called the summer solstice. All right, let's clear that up. Solstice, Latin, sol, sun, stis, stand. It's referring to the poles and where they stand in relationship to the sun. So at that point, the North Pole is the closest to the sun that it is all year. It's the longest day of the year, summer solstice, June 21st. There you go, first day of summer. All right, so now the days begin getting shorter until they arrive at the autumn equinox, September 22nd. Once again, the day and night are back in balance. That is the first day of fall or autumn. And then continues from there, days continue to get shorter until you arrive at the winter solstice. Again, referring to the poles. So at that point, the North Pole is the furthest away from the sun that it is all year. It's the first day of winter and it's the shortest day of the year. Okay, so like I said, that's not all super important to know. But what is important is how much sunlight your garden gets. And you should understand that throughout the year, that amount changes because the Earth's relationship with the sun changes. So that's why I told you that. All right, so how much sunlight does that bed get? How do I figure that out? Well, I'm gonna take you up to that pergola and then we'll figure that out right now. Let's go. So the simple way to get this information is to take a picture of your garden every hour for an entire day. Seriously, it sounds crazy, but it's really quite easy. You find a nice little roost like this, which by the way is the reason that I was up here on this pergola at the beginning of the video. This is where I took my photos, which I'll show you shortly. But what you do is literally at sunrise, you come out, you take a picture of your garden. An hour later, take another picture. An hour after that, take another picture until, well, until sunset, I guess, until your garden doesn't have any more light. And from that information, you'll be able to see how much sunlight your garden is getting. You can look at one single plot, like I can look at that bed, and I can look back through my photos, count how many hours of sunlight that gets. Okay, so now I have an understanding of what I can plant there. I look over here, count how many hours that gets. Oh, I realize that gets way less sun than that. All right, so now I'm gonna change what I'm gonna plant. Which, by the way, I've got some bad information doing this. I planted some kale over in that corner, and it turns out I only get about three hours or less of sunlight, which is a bummer. The kale is not really gonna like that. Anyway, well, you figure that kind of stuff out by doing this exercise. So. It's uh, very helpful and you do it basically four times a year on each one of those seasonal dates that I gave you because that's when the sun is going to majorly change at that point. Well, it's gradual, but those are the peaks of each of those points, you know, the beginning of the seasons. So literally, you just take a picture each hour and that's going to tell you how much sunlight, how many hours your bed gets. 
That might sound a little bit annoying, but look, you do it one time, one year, you have it forever, you'll know what to plant. So if you're just starting out your garden, this is really good information to have. If you already have a garden like I do, you might learn something new like I did. All right, so I'm gonna show you my uh, photos from this, okay? Here they are. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found that helpful. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you on the next video. Bye for now.